Hello, I'm here to talk to you today about polyamory, emotional literacy, and the benefits they can bring to society. Now, your first logical question is, what is polyamory? Well, let's look at the word and break it down to its roots. You've got poly and amory. Poly from the Greek meaning many, and amory from the Latin meaning loves. So many loves, and I found that a good working definition for polyamory is the practice of having multiple romantic or sexual relationships at one, the same time with all partners' full knowledge and consent. And that part's really important, full knowledge and consent. Without that, you're just cheating, and we all know how we feel about that. Um, but how does that work? I mean, society kind of views romantic love as a well, and you scrape the bottom of it, and that's, that's it. That's all your love. Um, but I'm actually going to quote Romeo and Juliet here. She says to Romeo, my love is as boundless as the sea. The more I give to thee, the more I have. And that's how love works. It's a positive feedback cycle. The more you give, the more you have to give. The more you receive, the more you want to give. And as a society, we're fine with that notion as long as we're talking about platonic or familial love. We understand that you get a new brother or sister and you're not like, oh, I'm sorry, I have enough siblings already. I can't love you. Uh, you get a new friend. Oh, sorry, one of your other friends has to go. Bye. Um, but romantic love, you're supposed to find your one person, and if you fall in love or in lust with anybody else, something must be wrong with you, or you're not in the right relationship. And polyamory takes that possessive notion of love, that one person is yours and yours alone, and says, nah, we can do better than that. Some of us want to. And um, so once you understand what polyamory is, let's move on to what is emotional literacy. And emotional literacy is the ability to understand and communicate about emotions, both your own and others. And that really starts within oneself. You build emotional literacy by understanding your own emotions. You say, I'm feeling jealous. Why? I'm happy. Why am I happy? And you get into the deep roots of your own emotions and take a walk down the scary road of your own psyche. Uh, and as you do that, you begin to talk with somebody and you find out that fights that you may have had that are getting worse and worse and worse, the more you communicate about your own emotions. I'm sorry, I'm feeling jealous because you talk more to this guy than you talk to me. Um, once you start to do that, people reciprocate. They start to talk about their own emotions, and it creates another positive feedback loop. And polyamory is really good at building emotional literacy because there is no normal in polyamorous relationships. Uh, each time, you have to sit down with your partners and say, what do we want out of our relationships? Do we want to have sex? Do we not? Are we polyfidelous? Are we only dating people within our group. And that requires a lot of emotional literacy and the willingness to deal with it and say, this is what I want and this is what I'm willing to compromise on. So polyamorous groups are really good at that. They talk about emotions, they deal with emotions, and they help the newbies understand what's going on with them. Um, but what benefit does that bring to society as a whole? Well, obviously, the more emotionally literate you are, the better you all are able to handle people being different. As somebody that falls under the bisexual umbrella, the polyamorous community is the most accepting of that. You like girls, that's great. You like guys, that's great. You like them both, even better. Let's have a party. Um, they're more accepting of people being a different gender, of being transitioning. Any kind of difference is more acceptable in the polyamorous community because we're already so far out there. There is no normal as long as you are not hurting anybody. Um, so when society understands that monogamy is not the only way to have a relationship that is perfectly acceptable and healthy to have polyamorous relationships, what does that do? Well, let me, let me stop right here and say we're not going to convert everybody to polyamory. Some people are monogamous, some people are polyamorous, and then there's a spectrum in between, and that is all perfectly okay. Um, but what happens is that now we have to confront the idea that we have, that we've been socialized to have, that you're going to grow up, you're going to find your one person, have a good wedding, and live happily ever after. Isn't that the formula? You know, grow up, get married, have kids. Hopefully, have a job in there somewhere. Um, but when we can accept that that's not the only way to do things, we have to look in with ourselves. We have to say, even if we are monogamous, we have to look at make sure that that's what we want and that's the only thing we want. And when we do that, we build our own emotional literacy. Um, and a more emotionally literate society is better able to handle crises as a whole. We might actually get something done in politics if we can, you know, talk about things in a reasonable manner, as opposed to doing terrible, terrible things to each other. So. What I want to leave you with is this idea that love is not finite. It is infinite in all its many forms, and almost all of them are beautiful. And so build your own emotional literacy. Think about why you're feeling what you're feeling. Thank you.